All right. Good morning, everyone. Cool. So, what is it that we have as an agenda? Well, we are not going to be spending 35 minutes, 90 minutes. It's a 60-minute webinar, which means we will be done by roughly 11:30. So, we have another 55 minutes to go, and uh, I believe it's not a question of time, but more in question of value, right? So, I can teach for three hours, but more than that, I want to give you as much value as possible in the next, uh, you know, hour. And what I want to do in today's session is I want to focus on reading comprehension. I'm going to talk about some of the myths that I've seen, um, you know, usually people um, believe in, right? I want to kind of clarify some myths, especially uh, this would be true for if you have not started reading comprehension. This would be true if you are already, um, you know, well into center, you know, reading comprehension, maybe your practice from the OG. Doesn't matter what stage you are, there will always be something that you will be able to take away from today's session. Very quickly, that's me. My name is Arun. I'm the founder of Crack Verbal. And uh, I also happen to be a GMAT GRE coach and MBA admission consultant. And uh, please feel free to connect me on LinkedIn. So that's my LinkedIn ID. I, um, you know, uh, post a lot of things about career, about, uh, you know, career choices, career advice. So in case that is something that interests you, please connect with me. My email address is over there. Uh, please let me know if there is anything that I can do to help you. Couple of uh, students, I think you have uh, <coughs> probably seen this on the website, so I'm not going to take a lot of time over here. But one thing that I just wanted to let you know that, you know, what we are telling you or what I'm going to teach you, I know for a fact works. Correct. And when people ask me, Arun, how do you know it works? See, um, in online and especially in an online world, you know, things can be very different. But I have been a classroom teacher for almost close to, um, you know, 20 years now. Right. So the thing is, uh, when you have a classroom kind of uh, scenario, by the way, just checking very quickly how many of you are practical students. So I, I cannot do workshops in classrooms. So, you know, I get real time feedback of the kind of, uh, you know, uh, sessions that we kind of conduct. So, you know, I know for a fact that whatever I'm going to tell you, whatever I'm going to teach you will be stuff that works, correct? It's not that I'm going to say something on a webinar on a nice Sunday morning and then disappear. Okay. So, Great. Um, and by the way, when I'm putting in this poll, I'm also looking at how many of you are participating. I see a few of you have not participated. Here is one request. Can you please turn off all the other tabs? Just take your eyes away from your phone and just listen to uh, you know this webinar. I promise you, I'm going to get you all my experience. I've been teaching GMAT for close to 20 years. So all my experience I'm going to bring. So uh, I'm going to make sure that we have a lot of content. Please, um, you know, just 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 be engaged. That's the best way for you to get value out of this. Um, some of our mentors, you probably have seen some of them on the website, but one of the key things at Crackable is to actually connect great mentors to awesome students, right? We act, we, we act as a bridge. That's really what we do. Um, so Shrikant, for example, if you have attended our Kormangala class, is one of our star faculty, but he also happens to be a blue-eyed boy uh, uh, at Amazon India. He's, you know, uh, he's having one of the largest categories, uh, fantastic uh, experience, but he comes to the class, he teaches. So I think that's a great value that a lot of students derive, right, from other experiences. A couple of free resources to get you started, and then we will get on to the topic at hand. Uh, so the first thing is, I wanted to, so those who are not students, for students, you already have this as in this module as part of your comprehensive course. But if you are not a crackable student, uh, we are just giving you this module. This module is called How to Study for Your GMAT. And this is one thing that I um, have been, I've been voicing this for a long time now. And uh, I say this that please don't listen to GMAT instructors, okay? GMAT instructors have nothing to do their whole life. The only thing they have to do is study for the GMAT. So when they say that you have to study for two hours a day, three hours a day, they usually come from an ideal state, correct? Whereas I believe, and I'm a GMAT instructor too, but I believe that a bigger challenge for you on the GMAT is not what to study. 
okay the what to study according to me is going to be a lot less important than how to study because today a lot of information is available online correct lot of stuff you just go google for gmat you pretty much understand that you know you have everything that you need correct but how to study is a is a very big barrier so i think that's that's one thing that um, you know this course helps i use a lot of uh, management techniques and anybody who's kind of gone through the course by the way students um, those who have seen the course uh, maybe you can just go ahead and let me know in the chat window what do you think right um so again on the website there are ebooks that you can download i'm not going to be uh, delving too much into this there is also our youtube channel we 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 put out a ton of content we have an in-house um, you know kind of video team so we are uh, trying to churn out at least a couple of videos every single week right so all of this is pre content you don't need to be a crack mobile student you still get this so i just wanted to make sure that you don't miss out on any of these free resources <laughs> all right so let's get started so the main topic that we have reading comprehension all right now before we get there i just wanted to kind of give you <coughs> some basic things about reading comprehension and there are a lot of things on the screen so uh, don't worry i'm going to take you through each point one by one okay so we want to make sure that all of you are on the same page on the gmat you're going to get four passages okay so you're going to get a total of four passages and each passage is going to get three to four questions all right <clears throat> remember this is standard which means you are going to see anywhere between 13 to 14 questions on the gmat okay technically it is 12 to 16 but you would pretty much see about 13 to 14 questions right that's pretty much the standard range that you want to have on the gmat you're not going to get 12 you're not going to get 16 which means each passage will not have four questions and you know each passage will not have three questions could be three could be four correct typically about 250 to 400 words passage will appear on the left hand panel and the questions will appear one at a time remember one at a time on the right panel which means while you are taking a particular passage you do not know whether that particular passage has three or four questions correct so remember that is going to go into your decision making which means that when i encounter a passage right i need to keep that in mind that you know that could be either three or four questions because my timing is also going to depend on that and uh, you can just preview the first question right so let me ask you this first before i get on to the next uh, you know part of it i'm going to explain a little bit about the algorithm but can you just post on the chat window what do you think is it a good strategy to see the question first before you answer the passage good okay so some people say no some people say yes okay so those who say yes can you tell me why yes and those who are looking at no why no just what were your thought process i want you to great so is the answer to specific great now i want you to think okay because it's a very very important question why i'm saying is not because of the strategy but <clears throat> but it basically is going to um talk about a bigger point okay there is a bigger underlying point that i wanted to kind of touch when i talk about this so i'm going to come back to this i want you to remember there is a very crucial underlying point that is going to be super critical for your reading comprehension just this one thing correct that if you think seeing the question is a good idea there is something that is fundamentally wrong in the way you are approaching reading comprehension okay that's a tall statement to make but that's a fact all right so let me now tell you um so by the way great answers uh, all of you uh, magnonia malashree vignesh paramita thanks for sharing 
uh, Hima Bindu, a lot of you have, have given some great points, but I'll, I'll get on to that point quickly. Now let's understand how the algorithm works, okay? So it's very important. So why don't you, so how many of you, uh, let me put it this way, uh, don't know the adaptive algorithm? How many of you don't know how the adaptive algorithm works on the GMAT? Just go ahead and set no on the chat window, that's okay. Like I don't know. So you don't know? No, okay. So, okay, even if you know, you can say I know, right? So let me just see. Okay, cool. All right. So are you okay if uh, I give you like a quick five minute summary of the algorithm? Yeah. So I'll give you a quick summary of the algorithm, right? So that you get a sense of it. So what I'm going to do is for illustration purpose, I'm going to take two candidates, right? So let us say, um, can I have some names? So let's say I'm going to just pick two names, right? For no reason. I like the name Gyan. So Gyan sounds like a nice name. Okay. Gyan means knowledge. And I don't know what Kogul means. So I would like to know what Kogul is. So that's a nice name. So there are two people, Gyan and Kogul, who are uh, taking the GMAT. Okay. And uh, here is the rule. What GMAT says is that you have various categories, various levels of questions, right? So let's say you start with the 750 to 800 bucket. There is 700 to 750 bucket. There is 650 to 700 bucket. There is 600 to 650 bucket. There is uh, 550 to 600 bucket, correct? So these are the various buckets that you get on the GMAT, all right? When I say bucket, these are the difficulty level of the questions. Now, what happens when GMAT starts? GMAT doesn't know uh, what level you are at, correct? So GMAT says, you know what? Let me just start them at what I would say as an average level, correct? So let both of them start at an average level. But here is the key. GMAT says, if you get more than 60% of the questions right, I'll promote you to the next bucket. If you get less than 40% of the questions right, I'm going to demote you to the lower bucket. But if you are going to be somewhere between 40 to 60 percent, I'm going to retain you in the same bucket. All right. Clear. By the way, I'm making it very simple. Please don't get into this whole boundary point thinking, how can 750 be in this boundary also that boundary? I'm just making it simple. Okay. Not trying to complicate it. But uh, that's generally, you know, as a, as a thumb rule, you can just remember this is roughly how it works. Now, let's say that there is verbal. So how many questions do we have in verbal? How many questions? We have 31 questions in quant, 62 minutes, correct? 36 questions in verbal, right? So what happens to the 36 questions? No, first six questions, Gyan and Kogul get, both of them are in this bucket, all right? Now, I am going to just put, Gyan gets three of them, right? And Gyan, I'm just, you know, going to pick one person to illustrate a point, so please don't feel bad, okay? Uh, but Kogul, ends up getting four questions right. Now think about what happens. Gyan remains in the same bucket because he got 50% of them right. But Kogul, because he got four out of six, which is 66%, ends up getting a jump to the next bucket. Now what happens, so let's say that the next is, let's say, a string of eight questions. Then let's say there is a string of 10 questions. So that makes it 24. And then there is a string of 12 questions. Let's say these are the four strings of questions that you are judged on, correct? Uh, by the way, I'm just checking it's correct, right? So uh, 14, 16, okay, 26, 36, good. So now what happens is uh, the next set of eight questions, Kogul gets six of them right, Yan gets four of them right, Yan continues to be in this bucket, Kogul moves to the next bucket. And the next set of 10 questions, Gyan again gets five of them right. Kogul ends up getting just about six right. So he manages to sneak into the next bucket. Whereas what happens? Gyan continues to be in the original bucket. And then in the last six, 12 questions, both of them end up getting, let's say, six or let's say five. So both of them end up getting five, which means Kogul ends up at this, you know, kind of, last bracket. So Kogul ends up with uh, 760. And again, Gyan, apologies for it. But let's say 
he ends up with a 620. Right? Now, I want you to think about it. How many questions did Gyan get right? So, think about it. He has got 18 questions right. 17 questions right. Sorry. Okay. And how many questions has Kogel got right? Okay. So, it's not that he's got a lot of questions right. He's just got 21 questions right. What is the difference? The difference is hardly four questions. Right? <coughs> With just four questions more, how come the difference in the score is so high? How come he ended up at a 760 bucket, he ended up at a 620 bucket? Can you think about it? How is it that two people scoring just a difference of four questions end up with two diverse score points? And I want you to think, right? Because it's very important for us to understand that. Okay. So I got a couple of uh, this. So more correct answers up front. That's not the point. There is something else you have to think of. Exactly, Manpi, in the right. Kogul, look at the last. 12 questions, right? The last 10, 12 questions, what is happening is Kogul, for him to get 5 out of those 12 questions right, he is handling a deadly 770 level questions. Each question thrown to him is a super tough question. Whereas what happens in the case of Gyan, the questions that are thrown at him, the last 12 questions, the one that you see over here, they are a lot easier. And GMAT, what it does is it is just giving you it's, think of it as weighted average. So GMAT is just giving you a preference or just gives that thing saying, well, because you handle the harder questions, I'm going to reward you better. All of you get a sense? Now, how does it work in reading comprehension? And this is the reason I'm saying this is, by the way, any questions on what, what I just said now? All of you able to understand the Adaptive algorithm. Nikhil, please don't use um, whatever I've told you. This is just illustration. I'm just trying to make it simple. The strings are not 6, 8, 10, 12 and all that. Okay, So they are not fixed. Even this 40%, 60% I'm saying um, is more of a thumb root. Okay? So it's kind of uh, this thing. All of you got it? Can you just go ahead and type in the chat window? Give me a yes so that I can of can talk about why it is important for you to know this for reading comprehension, right? See, the reason I'm giving you this background is because on reading comprehension, something interesting happens. See, on reading comprehension, you're going to get four passages, right? So you're going to get passage one, passage two, passage three, and passage four. Now, let's say that uh, passage one has, let's say, um, questions A, B, C. This has A, B, C, D. This has A, B, C. And this has A, B, C, D. Now, your performance on the passage, okay, is going to be purely a function of you getting all, you're attempting all of the questions, three or four questions, which means the adaptive algorithm will not kick in. Anyone, whether you got answer option A right or wrong, you will still end up seeing B. Whether you get B right or wrong, you will still end up saying the same question C. Right? So these questions, in some sense, are pre-selected for you. You understand the word pre-selected? Like the algorithm is not going to kick in when you are doing a particular RC passage. All of you clear? So whether you get the first question right, wrong, doesn't matter. Same second question, same third question, same fourth question. However, here is something very interesting. Out of the four passages, potentially one entire passage could be an experimental question. What is an experimental question? Well, on the GMAT, this is another thing that you probably need to know, that on the GMAT, right, when it comes to quant and verbal, do you know all of your, so all the 36 questions and all sorry, all your 31 questions and 36 questions don't go towards your final GMAT score. Correct? There are three experimental questions in quant 
and there are as many as um, six experimental questions in verbal. What do you mean by an experimental question? An experimental question is a question which does not count towards your final three-digit GMAT score. And remember, one entire passage is going to be experimental for you. And the reason why you have an entire passage that is experimental is because GMAT cannot give you a real passage and ask experimental questions, right? Nor can it give you um, an experimental uh, passage and ask you real questions, correct? So that doesn't work. For that reason, um, you know, an entire passage is going to be experimental. Which one is going to be, we don't know, right? Uh, but what it also means is, I've had some students uh, tell me about the strategy that they have, which is to guess an entire passage, okay? Because they run out of time, they say, let me guess an entire passage. Terrible, terrible strategy, okay? The reason it's a terrible strategy is because A, what if it is not an experimental passage? Which means not only did you attempt a passage which is not going to count towards your final GMAT score, but the one that did count, you ended up getting that wrong, which means you got one third of reading comprehension wrong, right? You would never do that to sentence correction. You would never do that to CR. So please don't do that for, um, for <coughs> this as well, okay? So that's one important thing that I wanted to kind of mention. I'm going to highlight this again. Adaptive algorithm will not work within an RC passage. And one of the passages will not be scored. This is the experimental passage. All of you fine? Very important that you know this. Now, I'm going to come to some challenges. If you have, uh, you know, taken the course, you probably know what I'm saying. But I just want to reiterate, uh, you know, what I call as, you know, reading in real life versus reading on the GMAT. So one fundamental thing that I would like to tell, and this is where the entire course is based on this assumption, correct, is, you know, when I ask people about uh, reading comprehension, one thing that really surprises me is though reading comprehension today has more number of questions, right, than any other topic, people tend to not prepare for reading comprehension. The, the usual, uh, you know, feedback that I get from students is, Arun, but I already know how to do reading comprehension. Think about it. When you wake up every day morning, you don't do sentence correction. You don't do critical reasoning. Correct. But what you do is you do reading comprehension. When you read that WhatsApp message, when you read that email from your boss, when you read that newspaper article, when you open that, uh, you know, particular post uh, on, uh, you know, uh, Facebook or Instagram that you're looking at, all we are doing the whole day is we are reading and comprehending. So what happens a lot of times students come and I feel that reading comprehension is like the, you know, the poor man's sentence correction. Correct. They used to say that about uh, Mithun Chakrabarti, right? That he was the poor man's Amitabh Bachchan, right? Similarly, it's like a poor man's sentence correction. Like people don't pay respect to reading comprehension because they think that I've been doing this all my life. What is it that I have to learn? Here is the fundamental thing that you need to know. Okay. And I'm basing this from all the experience that I have. Trust me on this. The, the reading comprehension on GMAT is a very different beast than the way you read in real life. So the technique that I'm going to just touch upon today is, is a technique where I'm going to talk about some of those essential points in that technique. But first, I have to kind of set a base of what are the things that are different when you read a passage on the GMAT as opposed to reading it in real life. The first problem that we have is the problem of limited time. See, um, in real life, when you are reading the, you know, morning newspaper, right? So today is uh, Saturday. So you know, uh, if you have a day off, you probably want to sit at home and uh, you know nothing much to do. You take the newspaper and you read it. There is no one putting a gun on your head, right? Saying, hey, you know what? I need you to read in two minutes. But on the GMAT, what you'll realize is that the way you read with time pressure makes your brain act very differently. How many of you agree with this statement? That the way 
time plays a role in the way you process words is very critical and that's a very important thing that you need to remember which is why reading in real life is very very different okay point number one here is the second thing that i feel is very different on the gmat think about what is it that you read when i said that you read this facebook post or insta post or you read the newspaper or you read whatever you know is your poison right insta news or you know uh, whatever you read even if it's a simple email that comes from your boss what you are really doing is you are reading with context remember what i'm saying you read with context so i'll tell you what reading with context is um if you drive a car or if you ride a bike and you go to office every day let's say now very honestly has it ever happened that uh, you were in a car driving or you were being driven and uh, you were listening to the music and you know before you realize you actually reach your destination and you don't even remember how the hell you drove to that place correct so what happens our brain works with 90% autopilot this is something that people don't realize our entire lives we go in autopilot your brain doesn't have the capacity to actually process every information that you take in so your brain has a natural process of filtering out things that it does not need to worry about okay context is very very crucial what happens on the gmat is the kind of content that is given to you you do not have the context see if i were to tell you what will be india's performance in the you know uh, in the in the test series in new zealand correct will virat kohli perform as a captain now the thing is whatever i'm telling you is a fairly complex thing if you are not following cricket it's going to be super hard for you to understand what i'm saying but if you follow cricket you will realize that it comes very intuitively to you the problem on the gmat is all the topics that are given to us there is no context i have never read this in my life how many of you feel in your reading a passage that it's the first time that you are reading it it could have been from a science magazine it could have been from a political journal correct and that creates you know it feels like you have been you know put into a room and please tell me on the chat window if you agree some passages when you start reading it and especially let's say you have just solved a tough cr problem or a tough sc problem and then you jump on to this rc passage you start reading it it is almost like you are reading it but your brain is not registering it correct so it's like you it's like you know someone blindfolded you put you into this dark room turned you a couple of times suddenly opened the bar, you know the the you know the blindfold and then put spotlight in your eyes so you are reading it and your brain is saying you are i am reading but i am not able to understand correct and it gets very overwhelming so i have read the first paragraph i don't know whether i should continue with the second paragraph because i haven't understood the first paragraph correct and here is what happens the third thing mental stress if you are getting stressed in practice imagine the the stress that you are going to face on the day of the test correct so there are two different things correct the first thing is what i would call as the internal pressure so what is internal pressure okay so let me ask you on a scale of 1 to 10 how determined are you how focused are you to get an mba in 2020 like you have made your mind ki kuch bhi ho ye saal i have to take the gmat and i have to get into an mba program i have to do well on a scale of 1 to 10 what is that number perfect 9 10 10 see so many nines and tens and you know what that's great all of you right there is someone with a six perfect no problem correct but the point is if you are going to give yourself a 10 what it means is that also is going to be pressure that you're going to carry into the test center with you and the thing is reading comprehension is very different than sentence correction and critical reasoning do you know why 
because in critical reasoning and sentence correction my concentration needs to be there only for 60 seconds only for 90 seconds only for 120 seconds or maybe it's a very tough uh, cr question maybe 2 and a half minutes but in reading comprehension you need to maintain your focus okay you need to maintain your focus for guess how long you need to maintain it for 6 to 8 minutes right that sometimes becomes another problem so one stress is the expectation that you have from yourself yaar kuch karo ya maro do or die i have to do it so that pressure is on you second pressure is the focus and the attention that is required to sit focused how many of you when you have uh, have you taken a how many of you have taken a full length test a full length test complete quant and verbal by the way if you raise your hand i wouldn't know so great so there are some people who have taken it if you have taken the test do you know how it feels when you are solving not your first passage but your fourth passage how did it feel see question number 6 mein when you get the passage it's a lot easier in fact one of the reasons we insist okay that you take the entire test is not because whatever score is going to come is reflect uh, is a reflection of you but we insist that you take the test because you understand and the real challenge of the gmat the real challenge of the gmat is not you solving that question on rc the real challenge on gmat is for you to actually sit exactly urvashi right last passage i had students saying arun my brain stopped working i you know i just kind of all my mental energy ran out see think of it as a mobile battery correct subah so charge karke 100% hota hai by the time it's lunch it's like 70% right Three, four. You are consuming a lot of data. It becomes like thirty percent. You don't worry. You don't put it on charge. Then at six thirty-seven, when you want to book your Uber, that time critical low, right? Five percent left. Three percent left. That's exactly what happens on the GMAT, correct? And and reading comprehension has that weird way of you know kind of mentally tiring you, correct? Chetan, I'm very very. Um, this of getting five passages it is based on my so just to uh, let you know we work very closely with gmac correct so uh, i i am i'm saying this uh, in an unofficial capacity obviously officially i i cannot say this but we work very closely with them it's four passages so i can be fairly certain on that right how many of you feel that you also seem to suffer from a limited reading speed ki yaar whatever i do i don't think for such a passage i could have read faster do you feel that maybe your reading habits have been poor maybe you are not a voracious reader hence because of that how many of you feel that there is a problem like that paramita feels that way akanksha feels that way sai feels that way parikshit feels that way i like the fact that he uses the word i and cb makes it even more grammatically correct i do right vikel arpan so here is the thing okay what if i were to tell you and i want you to think about it okay i want you to you know i want you to think whatever i'm going to say now do not try to eliminate the constraint work around the constraint i'm going to say this again let it sink in do not eliminate the constraint by saying i will improve my reading speed work around the constraint and say given my reading speed how can i score as high as possible on the gmat and the reason i'm saying this is because of two reasons right first reason is i have and and you know what i have been guilty of giving this advice at some point in my life okay so just to give you a background you know how long i've been teaching gmat you know what is the first topic that i started teaching when it comes to standardized test prep the first topic can you guess what topic it would be what do you think i taught first first thing that i sentence correction was my last okay correct i taught reading comprehension so this is way back guess when it was it was 2000 okay 2000 is the year when i taught there is a institute called ims 
um, Bombay based uh, cat coaching. Um, and, uh, you know, back then I was naive and, uh, you know, I thought, let me teach reading comprehension. I read a lot of books, okay, back then. And think about it 20 years, man. I mean, I've done literally a PhD on this. And I read every book on how to read, how to speed read, correct? And, you know, I was convinced that the techniques that they show you, right, were some kind of a magical technique that will work. So some people say don't, you know, sub-vocalize, vocalize, use this technique, put your finger under this, focus only on nouns, verbs, blah, blah, blah. But let me tell you from my experience of 20 years, all of the techniques are basically, they, they, are, they are all, see, I'll tell you the fundamental flaw with improving your reading speed. Um, so let's take typing speed. Now, typing is a physical process. So I have a keyboard and I can type. You can measure my typing speed, but you cannot measure how fast I think. Correct? How fast I think is not a physical capability. How fast I think depends on other variables. What does it depend on? As I said earlier, it depends on variables like how are you managing stress? How are you feeling with the content? How much time you have left? So your reading speed depends on a lot of these factors. So that's the first thing that I wanted to say, which is do not try to, you know, kind of worry about your reading speed. In fact, I can tell you the opposite. In my experience teaching reading comprehension, what I've realized is people who are voracious readers, I, any voracious readers over here, someone who loves reading, who loves reading, fiction, non-fiction, everything. Arpan, you have a problem. Shubham, you have a problem. I'm not joking. People who read well, Akanksha, you have a problem. Because if you read a lot, the problem is you will get stuck. You will go back and you will try to read the whole passage, extract as much from it before you can move on. But if you don't read a lot, you will be less emotionally attached to reading the whole passage and understanding it. Correct? So a lot of GMAT is also about your ability to know how much to kind of grasp and how much to move on. So people who read a lot get enamored by the fact that I have to read and understand everything. People who don't read a lot, on the other hand, are actually pretty okay reading and, you know, kind of being okay with not understanding the whole thing. Okay. And that is what my fifth and the last point is going to be. Just one last tip over here. A lot of places I've heard start reading newspapers, start reading magazines. And this is usually, it comes from this whole cat coaching business, correct? So cat coaching, if you look at most of these time and career launcher amas and all of these, they give you this advice. Terrible advice, okay? Read newspapers, read magazines because you want to enrich yourself, because you want to be a better person, because you want to get into a management stream and you want to enhance your knowledge about the world around you. But we are playing a two to three month game. Reading comprehension is a two to three month game. You need to score high on the GMAT. You don't need to improve your life habits. Okay. If your life habits improve as a result of GMAT, excellent. But my intent is one thing and one thing alone, which is to get you to as high a GMAT score as possible. And for that, please don't start reading magazine and waste your time now. Focus that time on studying for the GMAT. Okay. And what the technique that we teach in the class, and I'm going to give you an uh, overview of the technique, you will realize that it's actually, um, you know, it, it has nothing to do with how much you read. It has to do with something else. Okay. Now comes a very, very crucial question. Okay. And I want you to answer this question. I want you to answer this question. I'm going to put the fifth point. Okay. I'm typing something in the chat window. Okay. On a scale of 1 to 10, how important is it for you to understand the passage completely? 1 being low, 10 being the highest. How important is it for you to understand? Okay. 6, 8, 7, 9, 8, 8, 8, 6, 4, 3, 5, 6, 6, 
6141775895 great excellent 878 more when wonderful so you know 68 nice nice number great 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 okay good uh, i'm going to ask you another question on a scale of 1 to 10 how important is it for you to answer the questions correctly 10 has to be 10 nobody can say 8 nobody can say 6 correct and this very fundamental thing people end up losing out right so if i were to offer you one advice that i want you to kind of etch in your mind okay wherever you are studying stick it at where you are tattoo it in your arm okay if needed okay but remember this is the key i'm going to write it down over here answering questions is far more important than understanding the passage now i'm going to spend uh, some time on this just to make sure that we have all understood what this is saying now what do i mean by answering questions is more important than understanding the passage what i see with students is when they start with reading comprehension they have this fixation to spend way too much time reading the passage for the first time remember the word reading comprehension okay i'm going to use this word reading comprehension okay so let's try to see so what it means is i have two things to do correct so the first thing that i need to do is i need to read second thing that i need to do is comprehend but you know what don't look at reading comprehension as just reading comprehension that is not the task the task is reading comprehension and answering the damn questions you are forgetting the third task task 1 task 2 task 3 this is what is going to get us the marks on the gmat right but obviously none of you said zero because you can't not read the passage not understand the passage and still answer all the questions correctly that's also not possible right so what i want you to do is i want you to think of this this portion as two separate things when we say reading we think reading is just one thing right there is just one way in which we can read but in reality on the gmat there are two ways in which you actually read and these are two separate distinct ways of reading the first is called skimming and the second is called scanning can anyone tell me what is the difference when do you skim let's start with this first tell me when do you skim what is skimming there is one key essential trait to skimming right so skimming is a process when you read some parts of the passage get a brief idea when you read it identify okay get a gist of the whole thing correct correct grasping the main point excellent when critical reading is still required chetan critical reading is skimming okay when you take a newspaper in the morning okay you take a newspaper in the morning you have no idea what the newspaper is going to say you have 5 minutes to read the newspaper what would you do you would do skimming skimming is reading without knowing what to expect reading without knowing what to expect got it what is skimming scanning if there is skimming what is scanning scanning is when do you scan think about it you read a classifieds in the newspaper quickly you go through it no it's not reading every detail tanishk 
it's not observing. No, that's a wrong definition of scanning. Scanning is not observing. Scanning is going to the relevant parts where you find your answer. Correct. So scanning is going to specific parts that's relevant to you. Clear? Now, here is what you need to understand on the GMAT. What are you going to do? You are going to do skimming or scanning. Skimming or scanning. Both. Excellent. We are going to do both. First, what will we do? We will do skimming. Second, what will we do? We will do scanning. Correct? Now, here is a thumb rule for all of you. Okay? This is a thumb rule for all of you. You have about two minutes to do skimming, but I want you to spend a good, I don't know, five to six minutes while you're doing scanning. Why am I giving you three times? You know, if you look at it, it's two minutes and six minutes, correct? So why am I giving you six minutes for scanning and two minutes for answering the question? Why am I doing that? Why am I saying that? Because I'll go back to what I said earlier. Read, answering the questions is the most important thing, right? Understanding is not that important because you just need to get a context. You just need to get a context, okay? So very important that you learn how to skim and how to scan. See, getting into uh, skimming and scanning is not within the, what do you call it, within the scope of a webinar, correct? And for that, you would need to look at the crack verbal GMAT course where we have explained this in detail and the students have gone through it, correct? So with this out of the way, what I want you to do is I want you to kind of look at a strategy. So what is the strategy? The strategy is look at the passage as if you are the author. Okay. What I mean by that is don't think what is given there. Think why is it given there? Not so much what, but why. For example, let us say that, uh, so Tanishk, when you say you tried both, it is not a question of trying both. The technique itself has both of them involved. And if it did not work for you, and if you are a crack verbal student, please make sure that you reach out to someone in the team. We will schedule a call with you. We will pick a couple of passages with you, and we will work together with you to make sure that you have understood it. Having said that, just since Tanishka has mentioned this, I think it's important for me to uh, kind of just touch. See, whatever technique we are going to tell you doesn't mean that automatically you will now score 800 on the GMAT. Right? A tough passage will continue to be a tough passage. So, a technique cannot make the passage easier and you kind of getting all the questions. But what uh, it does is it's a lot better than any other technique that uh, you know is out there right so it's 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 what works but obviously if i had a magic formula by which everyone scores 800 uh, i mean life would be very different right so second thing is you pick this right what is the general information what is the structure of the passage what is the tone correct don't worry about the topic don't let it psych you out okay make sure that you are able to kind of uh, focus on the essence of the passage. Always focus on the answer options. The clue will be given in the answers and we'll get that when we look at some questions, but very, very crucial. At a verbal 40, let me tell you, the moment you cross the 90th percentile on the verbal, when you get into the realm, which is verbal raw score 40 and above, 
see the passages are not going to get any more denser you are not going to suddenly see passages appearing in latin and greek end of the day it will be passages in english but what will happen is the questions and the answer options will get so tricky will get so 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 you know subtle the difference between the right and the wrong answer option that that it will really test you okay and uh, yeah so we also have this whole thing about how to use tonality so kind of you know goes back to the tonality point right but again i'm as i said this is beyond the scope of a webinar on a weekend okay so i'm going to kind of just you know give you a overview of this let's do this i'm going to give you 2 minutes okay and i'm going to show you a passage all right so 2 minutes and what i want to do and if you are a crackable student please go ahead and map it so all of you know how to do mapping crackable students if not just write a few words of what you understood from the passage okay so i'm going to give you a passage and uh, let me be a little lenient let me give you 3 minutes and your passage is over here already time up so were all of you able to just go ahead and let me know in the chat window were you able to read the passage i'm going to kind of just you know maybe blank out the screen all right okay so three methods okay good 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 so so here is here is how i'm going to go about uh, you know this particular passage so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of uh, take it uh, one by one okay so i'm going to be going from uh, you know explaining how uh, i would have looked at this passage had i uh, seen it for the first time and what i'm going to focus now is i'm going to focus on what i said which is more around 
just skimming part, correct? Now, remember, what happens is there are a lot of words, if you realize, that can be kind of confusing, right? See, read this, prostaglandins are chemicals that are produced and released from virtually all mammalian cells when they are injured. These are the only, can get very complex, correct? But what you will realize is in this passage, right, if you understand the thing, what I would do is I would kind of keep reading. Look at the first paragraph. It says prostaglandins are produced when there is injury. Correct? So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say injury. Then I'm going to say, let's say, you know, prostaglandin. Correct? Then it says from the nerve endings. You see this? How many of you felt that getting into the second paragraph, the first sentence itself gave you context? Gave you context. Like, the earlier paragraph was about injury at nerve endings. Now, from nerve endings, where are they going to? They are going to spinal cord. And if you read, see, if I get stuck at a sentence like this, Local anesthetics work by blocking the electrical transmission across this and put it, they inhibit the flow of sodium ions through membrane. There is no way while doing skimming you can understand all of this. You have two minutes. You don't have time in two minutes to read and understand all of this. If there is a question that talks about how it's made electrically quiescent, you'll come back to this. First time, I don't have the mental. Uh, you know, energy to invest in reading all of this. All I know is sentence, uh, you know, when it comes to spinal cord, there seems to be something called as substance P. Then I read the third paragraph. Now, by the time I go to third paragraph, the structure is a lot more clearer in my head. Okay. It presents itself in a far more clearer way. And it says, well, now it's going to involve the brain itself. And what is the thing that he's talking about over here? Talking about endorphins. Really, this is your paragraph. This is your passage. In two minutes, all that you know is pain signals are carried through the body. Nerve endings, something to do with prostaglandin. Spinal cord, something to do with substance P. Brain, something to do with endorphins. And you know, you got a structure. Once you've got a structure, you now need to get to the questions. I'll go back to why I told you that it is a terrible advice to actually read the question first. Can you now tell me why, what harm will you do to yourself by reading the question first? What harm are you going to do if you read the question first? Can you think about it? If you end up reading it first, Without reading the passage, what is going to happen? Won't be able to know the structure. Correct. What happens? Perfect. All of you. Too much. See, exactly. You will not be able to do skimming because your brain is so busy doing scanning. It will just look at that one answer it wants to kind of this. So you cannot do scanning and then skimming. It has to be skimming and then it has to be scanning. Clear? Which is why I told you that that question is a very important question. By itself, tactically, you want to have a look at that question. That's not going to change. But your thought process, that has to change. Which is why I'm saying first skim, then scan. Okay? All of you got this? Now let's do this. Let us say that we had a question based on this. I'm going to give you a good two minutes. Why don't you just go ahead and uh, solve this question?
all right so now what i want to do is i just want you to think that if you have done your job well of skimming how scanning becomes important see uh, especially for a big, big picture question you don't even need to go back to the passage right but uh, let us look at it i read answer option a analyzing ways that enzymes and other chemicals influence how the body feels pain correct right there is some mention of it i'll hold on to it describing the presence of endorphins where is endorphins coming in third paragraph cannot be the main idea c says describing how pain signals are conveyed in the body and discussing ways in which well let me hold on d says acupuncture electrical stimulation again comes in the third paragraph cannot be the main idea e says differentiating the kinds of pain that occur at different points in the body's nervous system okay so let me hold on to a c and d b and d i was able to eliminate now this is where you need to put the answers under a microscope the reason i told you uh, to kind of uh, you know uh, spend more time in the questions is sometimes on the gmat this itself can become very tricky correct for example you could think that it's actually differentiating na ki this thing then spinal cord then brain but think about it there is no mention of different kinds of pain it is just talking about pain not kinds of pain for that reason he goes off he says analyzing ways that enzymes in this influence how yes but you know what there is one important thing that is getting missed it is how the pain signal travels through the body is conveyed through the body that is missing in answer option a it is not about how body feels pain but it's how pain is transmitted in the body which is why c for charlie is right answer correct so sai the way to look at big picture main idea questions is here is a quick hack okay read the first few lines read the last few lines if at all you want to read it ideally big picture questions you don't even need to have that but if at all read the first few lines and the last few lines all right all right so um that's pretty much what i had uh, let me just quickly give you one more question correct so for example you have a question like this which says which of the most likely attributable to the effect of endorphins see at this point you are doing scanning correct what is the key behind scanning to know where endorphins appear where is endorphins endorphins appear over here so what you do you just look at it where is novocaine spoken about novocaine is over here so cannot be ibuprofen where is it it is over here cannot be if it is local anesthetic where is it it's over here cannot be where is aspirin somewhere over here correct cannot be what is acupuncture acupuncture is over here correct over here hence he is the right answer see once you get the get the sense of where to go back in the passage and answer it your your you know job becomes a lot lot easier all right cool so i'm going to take a couple of questions that's what i had uh, in store so i just want to make sure that i take a few questions before we kind of wrap it up um i did not say skipping you are saying not read every line in rc i'm not saying that you have to read every line correct but what i'm saying is don't invest in understanding everything remember i spoke about skimming i spoke about scanning i never spoke about skipping correct so skimming yes scanning yes while reading there is no option of skipping okay you have to read the whole passage right let me look at the questions uh, pariksha that a question if you look at the question then we basically start looking for answer yeah pariksha that's what we kind of ended up answering so thanks for that shubham asked what is the objective of experimental questions if they don't count towards your gmat score the reason you have experimental questions is because you have a uh, gmat is wanting to test those questions so gmat has this thing where it wants to make a particular question culturally neutral make sure that there is no disadvantage 
to any demographics right so women taking it and men taking it the score should not vary so there is a lot of statistical input that they actually get right so that is the reason they have these experimental questions to test the validity of the questions how many passages to solve in a row so manpinder had this great question while i'm practicing how many passages should i solve in a row uh, my general thumb rule 30 minutes or three to four passages okay 30 minutes three to four passages more than enough don't worry while practicing don't do 10 passages together in a day you will die okay bad strategy um vignesh had this question is it always required to scan while answering a question or is it fine to answer directly after skimming which could be answered <coughs> vignesh one thing on the gmat that i want you to remember okay remember this do not trust your memory on reading comprehension do not trust your memory your memory can be fickle there are ways in which gmat can use that to trick you please go back to the passage validate before you pick an answer the one exception to that is big picture questions as i said for a big picture question like main idea primary purpose you don't need to necessarily go back to the passage having said so i will still see the first few lines maybe the last few lines all right and how to practice rc and make the brain you know parikshit i think you asked the perfect question which is you know once you start doing it i think rest of it will fall into place so my suggestion is don't stress too much about it right now okay uh, but you know uh, make sure that you are uh, you know practicing enough love the gmat love reading comprehension if you don't love reading comprehension you'll never get better at it correct so again you know the whole intent of this webinar if you realize we are covering a lot of matter so you know i'm, I'm just trying to give you a synopsis of what to expect on the gmat when it comes to reading comprehension uh, you know in the course i get into a lot more detail in the classes uh, we kind of uh, you know uh, put a bunch of uh, you know passages and we kind of teach them so thanks so much you know overwhelmingly i've seen people saying that you loved it and you can't wait to tell your friends thank you so much it means a lot to me because as i said one of the things that i am planning to do in 2020 is you know come more in front of audiences uh, try to answer more questions try to kind of give you a glimpse into what my thinking is as far as gmat is concerned and possibly help you with your goals right and as i said all of this is for free uh, if you're a crackable student obviously you have access to uh, our support so make sure that you reach out to us let us know uh, what is happening you would have got a call from uh, someone uh, bobby or someone else so you know make sure that you keep the engagement on all right thanks so much for joining me thank you and have a great rest of the week weekend all right thank you